Good afternoon, fellow citizens. Welcome back to the Citizens Chat Show. My name is Demiano Masesa. And of course, today we want to discuss Ugandan troops in Congo. The ADF, they are passed for ADF. Is it really genuine or is it a proxy war? And to discuss this and much more, of course, on my panel, I have uh, Edgar Tavaro. He's a politician and a political commentator. Of course, also a regional, there is a word you always use. A regional citizen or politician. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, just to correct the impression, yes. I am simply a citizen of the Great Lakes region with uh, eyes on, hands <laughs> on, and ear close to the ground and what is happening in the region. <laughs> Thank you very much, Edgar. And, and, uh, uh, I'm to glad you. to be here mm. because. Uh, I, I believe we have your roots in Congo. No, definitely. <laughs> and, we have, and we have another person on, 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 on the show who has her roots in Congo, whom we'll introduce at some point after us. <laughs> Good to see you, Edgar. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's a pleasure seeing you again. You don't mention he's a lawyer. It doesn't matter. Or? Yeah, he's a lawyer and, of course, a politician. So that is no, no, I'm not a politician. I'm a revolutionary. A revolutionary. A revolutionary. Let's up to yeah. <laughs> The politician is the one next to me. <laughs> next to you is uh, Joseph Ocheno. Of course, uh, UPC ideologue and uh, a contender for UPC leadership. Joseph, welcome to see you. And in the event that and a regular panelist. Indeed, in the event that I'm here, mm -hmm. uh, I'll consider uh, Edgar a scholar and will always be around my team and close. Mm -hmm. But absolutely delighted to be here and absolutely delighted to be here. Even in the with, proposed with my, with Congress my, cabinet. Indeed. And absolutely <laughs> delighted to have my beautiful sister, Winnie, with us. <laughs> Winnie, you're, you're welcome, honorable. Thank you. Uh, Winnie so Kiza, of course, uh, formerly a uh, leader of opposition and uh, Woman MP of Kasese. Yeah, with yeah. roots from Congo. With roots from she, Congo. She's able, okay, she's an she's an elder in the Banande community. I am which is I, across the Yes. Uh, the, the Bakonzo and the Banande share the same everything. Mm -hmm. Actually they, they are the Bakonzos on the other side of uh, of the country and I think it is the nineteen oh oh scramble that separated us, but otherwise they are my brothers, they are my sisters. Uh, to be exact, 1910. The 1910, yes. With the Congo Free State and uh, yeah, the, the, 1910. the British. <laughs> what was it called? The Protectorate. The Protectorate. Of Uganda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. So history, yeah. some of the Bakonzos <laughs> found their houses halved. Mm. One half in Uganda, the other half in Congo. Mm. So yeah. possibly for the man to reach the bedroom, if he by any luck he was in the sitting room, he needed a visa. So they are my brothers and my sisters. True. Interesting. Honor, true, right true. There. Very, very, yeah. very. We, very we shall have a more <laughs> conversation around here. And we'll see. Then uh, finally is uh, Elder Awichpola. Of course, is uh, the Director of External Services with the NRM, uh, which you welcome, and uh, our regular on the show. You forgot to add, he's actually a major. Major, retired. A retired major yeah. of the, of the yeah. NRA. That's the only reason why he's not here, not in Congo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of, of the NRA and, uh, and UPDF. Thank you so much, Damiano, and nice to be here with my colleagues, the beautiful sister that has been said. And with Tabaro, we are to, with Tabaro in law school together mm. uh, in Makere. Uh, but the only unfortunate thing is that he didn't go to the great Ontario school, so mm. we missed him. Well, well, that's besides the point, but you forgot to add that we, we belong to the same study group that you yes, chaired at Makere. I chaired a study group. Oh, Museveni told me they had one in Dar es Salaam, and I formed it. And we really made it very active. In it. it came and opened it, and we made it very active with Tabaro. Actually, what we are discussing, we have been discussing then, right from year one in Makere. True. Then, Why haven't you influenced Ender so that we avoid? Uh, no, no, it's, 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 it's a continuation of the discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, we have not yet formally uh, uh, started off the discussion. But you shall recall, mm -hmm. at that time, we invited the chief of staff of the UPDF, NRA Which, then? No, 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 it had become UPDF. This oh. is 1997. Oh. The NRA became UPDF on okay. 8th of October 1995. Oh. I'm very, we, uh, by the way, it's very, very critical mm. in what we are going to discuss. Uh, because NRA and UPDF are two different things. Mm. He's NRA. In He's NRA, but many of his contemporaries at law school are UPDF. In thinking. <laughs> ah, no, even... <laughs> no, he's <laughs> even, he's <laughs> even so these are the ones... Who but you shall recall... Uh, these are the Ali. ones we hosted in... You shall recall... Yes. Yes. We hosted you in the These are the ones you saved in... We saved in Renzori from UNLA. Oh. Oh. General Chef Ali giving us a deep lecture at the Augustine Center. You remember? Yes. Some evening. <laughs> but, uh, well, I and... Uh, uh, Major Polau, which have a very deep history, oh, yeah. we disagreed in the past. Mm. 
but we, now we have more of, uh, we are more the common agreed. reality we are more that. agreed than we disagreed because I, i've become wiser <laughs> <laughs> Right there, and Edgar, of course, to our viewers, I hope we'll have a wonderful discussion. And, uh, given that people on this uh, show have uh, quite uh, interesting roots in this country. No, even with this, 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 this person, yes. you have interacted. She was, I used to work out with her, yeah. and uh, being the leader of the opposition, official opposition, mm. uh, I would whisper to her, not love, but <laughs> matters of the state. <laughs> no one think of whispering some people. Yes, people think <laughs> of other things. But, things. but she, was, mm. and she was very helpful. But I can tell you, Edgar is an interesting person to mm. work with. Mm. Interesting. Uh, Edgar, right there. And uh, to, to put you on the spot as the first person, we want to discuss and, of course, understand. Our visit to, to, to Congo as a UPDF, uh, is it about the ADF? Or it is really a proxy? would want to first have that understanding. And when you say proxy, what, what do you have in mind? I want really the mm. problem to be situated mm. rather than us. Uh, you know, when, when it's amorphous, mm. we may not arrive at the, the nitty gritty, mm. the nuts and bolts of, of what of what challenge we are, we are confronting. Maybe, maybe we, we, we are citizens of the, you are a citizen of the region. Mm. You just tell us proxy as you see it. Asante, Asante. I think you have set the, oh, okay. you have set the mode for it. Yes. Now, I, I, I happen to be I happen to be. Oh, let me put it this way. I, 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 I follow things that happen in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody mentioned that, that I'm a lawyer. I should like to add I'm a revolutionary lawyer. I do represent uh, certain belligerents in the region, mm -hmm. and uh, you are aware as much as everybody who's following here, and particularly our our, our good uh, our good retired major. That there's a law that governs armed conflict, yeah. the international norms and what have you. Now, I've undergoing trainings of, uh, in, in that aspect of the law. And as a result of that uh, little expertise that I've acquired, uh, there are belligerents in the region who come to me for, for legal advice. I've even represented some of them in court, uh, citizens and non-citizens of Uganda. I also represent refugees. So as a result of, 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 of these dynamics, there are certain things that have come to my to my knowledge because of that background, but also because of my curiosity. Mm -hmm. I should also add that uh, my parents come from Bufumbira. As such, I come from, uh, I belong to one of the Kinyarwanda speaking groups. And uh, we have blood relatives in Uganda, mm -hmm. in Tanzania, mm -hmm. in the Republic of Rwanda, and the DRC. There's what they call Kivus, eh? the, the two Kivus, Kivus north and south. Mm -hmm. Now, North Kivu is divided into uh, in the dynamics of things, in, in, in the construct of dynamics in, in the DRC. There's what they call Nord Kivu Grand and Nord Kivu Petit. Petit. Grand is where her, her relations come from, mm -hmm. the Banande. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, North Kivu Petit is where the Kinyaronda speaking people come from. And that's where I have relatives. But there are also Kinyaronda speaking people in South Kivu. Now, why am I deliberately mentioning this? Now, uh, 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 there is, there is a, a, a dynamic that I've seen is missing out many of these critical debates that we are, we are, we are, we are having. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I mentioned it to, 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 to my my good, uh, my good elder, Joseph Ochoa. Congressman. Whom I have immense respect for. We have been interacting mm. over the years, and uh, even our families, some have gotten to know another as a result. I respect him. So in 1979, there was a gentleman called Amon Bazira. Uh, Amon Bazira is very close to Honorable Winnie's heart because he was MP. Very. He was MP for her area. Yes. <laughs> was the MP? Congress ticket? Yes, sir, very yes, much. Yes, was oh, a very, congressman. Very, very much. Was Congress, very except congressman. Some very, 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 very much. I, I got to know Amon Bazira at a personal level because he was married to him in Rwanda. Yes. Now, Bazira wrote a brief <laughs> for the state. 79? 79, yes. Mm. To the president. He was, uh, he was the security chief. He was spy chief for Uganda at the time. Mm. He wrote a, a brief, an intelligence brief, to the president then be nice. But because the state was weak, it never, whatever, it never took off. By 1979, there was a group in Nairobi that formed RANU, Rwanda Alliance for National Unity. 
under the late Dr. Patrick Mazimpaka. Obi. Uh, yeah, Ntare Obi. He later became chairman of the African Union. Mm -hmm. Now, Bazira mm -hmm. picked information and addressed it to the state, detailing, detailing the dynamics of formation of this organization and its likely effect on the region. Now, in 1989 uh, or thereabouts, uh, the person who later became chief of staff of Uganda's Armed Forces, Brigadier General Chef Ali, mm. had just returned from uh, training in the, in the Soviet Union. He had done, uh, he had done, uh, he did staff college there, where he merged best. And his, uh, his paper, his paper, the research paper he wrote was on the same subject I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, later in 1990, was it 99, mm. during the Second Congo War, General Chef Ali was deployed in Ituri. And General Chef Ali had a background in that area as a commander of the Union Elephant Dictatorship. Mm. He operated from Beni. So he understood the dynamic. In the Gang of Four? Yes, what you the call you, you people call it the Gang of Four, but officially it was the UN Elephant Dictatorship. The political thinking and formation I belong to. His family root. The family. That, that's my family. That's where my family That's okay. uh, And that is our association with the NRM, but would like to really. To cut it off and then return to Congress. No, yes. no, 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 no. We like to call ourselves UN Elephant Dictatorship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what do they detail? They detailed that uh, the, the, the thinking that was emerging was going to cause conflict in the region. Mm. And I don't want to go into the fair detail because, you know, a, a, a topic of this nature at a time when there are hostilities yeah. between mm. states mm. Eh, mm. can infuriate further and cause further tension. So I'm trying to be, I'm trying to restrain myself. Mm. I call it self-censorship, but we, are, we have to be alive to the, the dynamics reality. of the situation. But we also have to be responsible citizens, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, but you see, unfortunately, I don't enjoy the same luxury as you do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't enjoy the same luxury as you do. You know you have the current tools here. <laughs> but, uh, Only second to which. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, and, you know, there are some incidents that may be unrelated. Well, well, mm. I have a, a, a background in academics, and uh, please forgive me if I sound sound a little more academic than practical but you have to understand the grounding of the ideologies and the doctrines of the states that are operating now two unrelated incidents one in 1896 in rwanda there was the coup d'etat of rushunshu it's a very a landmark in rwanda's history when uh, ruavujiri died suddenly and his son, Mivambwe, took over from him. Mm. Now, Mivambwe, he, he didn't have a mother. The king appointed a surrogate mother to be mother to the king. Now, she carried out a coup, killed the king. Didn't have a mother? The, the mother had passed on. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's how we put it in our language. I'm, I'm mm. translating mm. directly mm. To, from Kenya Rwanda to English. Mm. So forgive my... Mm. I'm thinking in Kenya Rwanda. And, and you're putting it <laughs> in English. Mm. So forgive... It's like the, the, the means I said you have said nothing. Mm. <laughs> 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 so I'm also in the similar situation. So, mm. I'm, really, I'm sorry I've gone way too deep because it yes. will explain the underpinnings of what we are having now. Mm. Now, the state of Rwanda that developed was one that is premised on subjugation, military subjugation and annihilation of its neighbors and establishing visceral states, visceral states. And that's what has been the case in the Republic of Rwanda all these years, save for the First and Second Republic. Mm -hmm. There was a, a, a president called uh, Bonventure, Bonventure mm -hmm. Bonimutua, mm -hmm. short-lived. Then there was Kaivanda and Javier Mana. Now, those ones were intra-looking. Now, the state that developed after Javier Mana returned to the what? The original. The original of <laughs> military su subjugation mm. and establishing visceral states. Mm. So in the minds of, 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 of that country, mm. uh, their country extends beyond its borders. Mm. 
Mm. In fact, in their mind, they have borders that cover North Kivu, Bufumbira, mm. uh, Buha in, 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 in Tanzania, mm -hmm. and, and South Kivu. So that is the sort of everywhere they have mm. an interest. Mm. Where yeah. they have an interest is their border kind of stuff. You know? uh, and uh, yeah. and, uh, and uh, you'll see the, them getting involved in, in, in Mozambique, uh -huh. in, in Central African Republic, mm. because those countries host a counter-elite, counter, -elite, counter yeah. a, an elite counter to what? Eh, was established in 1994. Mm. Now, there's another incident, the Fashoda crisis of 1898 in, in Sudan, where uh, uh, French and, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and British interests mm. uh, clashed and, uh, and, 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 and uh, informed the state doctrine of France in how it handles Africa. You know, France gets directly involved in its former colonies in Africa. Mm. That even even exchange of military intelligence, exchange of intelligence, has to go through LC in Paris. Mm -hmm. the, the, this gentleman here can't access intelligence from French-speaking countries without clearance from where? From Paris. Now, under, uh, uh, in the past for shoulder crisis, the French reorganized its state, its doctrine, its operation, its strategy and tactics in how to handle Africa. Now, they entered what they call an entente cordiale with British, that they will deal with another at arm's length and they should never have a military what? Confrontation. Mm -hmm. Now, over the years, the British have retreated and France has taken center charge. Now, Uganda is seen as a front line in the contestation between British and French interests. Mm -hmm. Now, of late, France has signed up big deals in Uganda. Mm. Total was given the concession to run the oil pipeline. Total was given explorational rights mm. in the Albert and Graben mm. together with the DRC. Mm. France trained the, what we used to call the Alpine Brigade, which has now been elevated to a division. And the same the Alpine Brigade, mm. the same Alpine Division is the one that is engaged in combat operations in the DRC. Mm. So, you're seeing French interests taking center what? Center, if, uh, center stage here in Uganda. Mm. Then you're seeing a state in the region that believes in ex establishing visceral states mm. in the region under their direct command and control. Now, in Uganda, post-1986, that has its grounding in, uh, in, in the debates at Dar es Salaam. Uh, Professor Shivji, Professor Nabudere, Professor Kanyuani, Peter Kanyuani, Walter Rodini, uh, who was the other person? Oh, let uh, Nathan Shamiyarida. Now, Nathan Shamiyarida mm -hmm. was an ideologue of the ZANU PF mm -hmm. and was involved in Mozambique as an ideologue. He's the one who advised President Yoweri Museveni to go to Montepez to undertake liberation activities there. Okay, and, and, and I'm going to sum it up. Now, the development of the Ugandan state in post-1986 is one that believes, one, in Pan-Africanism, two, interdependence and interrelatedness of the African people, and therefore promote trade, eh? not export a revolution, but the ideas and the ideals that have defined the doctrine, state doctrine in Uganda, should be shared with other peoples, and therefore develop, uh, develop uh, leadership that has similar thinking mm. eh, to drive towards an in political integration in East Africa. No, now we have one state that believes in subjugation. Then you have another state that believes in interdependence and interrelatedness. Mm. And this is the clash of the doctrines that we are having. And maybe could explain why you're calling it a proxy war in the Republic. In the, uh, Republic Democratic du Congo, as my friend Winnie likes to call it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Edgar. That is a very interesting history. And of course, it opens up so much for, for us to learn and uh, for even the viewers out there. I want to bring in Honorable Winnie. Honorable Winnie, uh, you, you have quite a lot of interesting, uh, you're from that region, and of course, your relatives out there. So we'd want to understand this ADF, which, which of course, I'll also invite uh, our, our major to, to talk about. The ADF. Is it really, does it exist? Do we know its structures? Do we know its leadership? <laughs> oh, we are just entering a country that has nothing. 
Thank you, Demian, mm. and I would like to thank Edgar for giving us that background, mm. which possibly majority of the citizens don't have access to. True. And we have gotten a free class, mm. a free lecture. Mm. By at, the, at the citizens' church, show. that's the, where you that find is, that is that the is love I of internet. think the mm. importance of this citizens' church. Mm. And as a citizen, I want to thank you, Edgar, for giving us that background information. But bearing in mind what he said, that there are states that are worrying here, and we wouldn't want to use this chat room to mm. inflame mm. everything that we have created and that we have worked for. I am a Ugandan first and foremost, who believes in the interests of Uganda. Mm but also believes in the interests of humanity. Mm -hmm. Congo is one of my origins, born in Uganda, originating from Congo. Mm -hmm. The area where the fight is, is entirely my home as well. Mm -hmm. Like Edgar said, he has origins in Congo, he has origins in Uganda then, but basically majority of the Bakons of people, their origins are in Congo. So you will find the Baira in Congo being a part of us, and that is the great North Kivu that he talked about. Mm -hmm. So where the real war is happening is where my people are. Mm -hmm. Well, I do believe that possibly my government went to Congo specifically for the interests of Ugandans. Mm -hmm. And if it was for the interests of Ugandans, I would say congratulations. But bearing in mind the fact that the, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Uganda, who is citizen number one, on several occasions keeps saying ADF is defeated. Mm. <coughs> ADF is no more. Mm. And I do agree with him that the current area that was attacked, actually there is no serious ADF. And I can tell Ugandans watching and those who are listening, that the strip around um, the region that was attacked, where Uganda went to display its might and saying we are following up ADF for causing havoc in Kampala, mm -hmm. I really would have asked, maybe the retired general here will tell me, mm -hmm. A ma major, major, major general. Yeah, the retired yeah. major general here will be able to brief me because I didn't get the opportunity of getting that brief if my country had possibly discussed this with parliament. Mm. As a Ugandan, I would have gotten the opportunity to see that the issue, the magnitude, and the, maybe the capacity of the force that we are going for whether it was really necessary for us to go as how much we went, to know how much we have spent there, whether really it was worth it, and also possibly to be able to understand even now that we are there, what have we lost in terms of money power? Where are our children, the ones who went to fight? Because I am alive to what happened in 98. When our forces again went to Congo, and majority of them ended up being killed there with no accountability, with no what. So in my own way of thinking, if it is ADF that took us to Congo, then I think we are at a loss. Mm -hmm. But if it is something else, <laughs> it is okay. So that is why for me, I, I would be mm -hmm. of the opinion, mm -hmm. and this is my personal opinion, mm -hmm. that it could be a proxy. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, interesting. It could yes. be a proxy. Mm. And then we are using the ADF as a forefront, mm. as a cover. But we should know this as Ugandans, mm. that what is our interest in Congo? Because we defeated the ADF and we thumped up for Yoweri Eric Aguta Museveni mm. with his mighty UPDF and said, hey, we have an army. Congratulations. Now, from nowhere we here, now we have them in thousands in Congo. That, that, you, you forgot to add, that battle was actually commanded by a fellow Mukonzo, <laughs> Lieutenant Kano Mawa Muhindo. Lieutenant Kano Mawa Muhindo is the one who commanded this. Um, this and did this, wonderful. They well. did wonderful things with Kazin the mm. late. So <clears throat> I really want to be briefed myself as a citizen of Uganda mm. whose forces are in Congo. I'm not yet aware of 
the atrocities we might have committed because they are also international protocols mm -hmm. that we had to adhere to mm -hmm. before going there mm -hmm. and in the process <clears throat> of our attacks. Mm -hmm. Personally, if it is ADF, it could have been something else because I know that the forces of Uganda defeated ADF. True. Mm -hmm. And, and I that. know that for sure the ADF's capacity in the Semulik Valley and the Virunga National Park areas mm -hmm. can't have any capacity whatsoever to cause havoc in Uganda. Mm -hmm. So I need to be educated further. Possibly the major general, the, the, the retired mm -hmm. major. major here mm -hmm. will be in position to take me to that school like Ediga has taken me to the school of the past. Yeah, interesting, Honorable. And, uh, and I'm, ag I'm agreed with Honorable Winnie. And mm -hmm. we haven't met for three years. Three years. But now. for some reason, because you have uh, tight links in the country there. So maybe, you know, you have some information that we are... Of course, we are I confess I have that information. <laughs> <laughs> maybe something else I just want to let the Ugandans know mm. is that uh, during the, the decentralization process, mm. I happened to be a counselor. Mm. And by good chance, my one and only husband was the district chairman mm. of the area. You was? Yes, your <laughs> cousin participated in assisting the government of Uganda repatriation to do a lot of cleaning on the mountains of Renzora and he's the one who suggested to government of Uganda to say look we can have a mountain brigade to take care of the Renzori region issues because this mountain has never been occupied by government mm -hmm. since independence or since its existence and he talked about the narrow operations in Renzori the Renzoruru movements in the Renzori the the now the NRA forces in the Renzoris and then the ADF. Mm. So he said, if we are to tackle the issue of ADF mm. from entering this area, we need to have our permanent forces around the Semulik Valley mm. and maybe the Virunga National Park so that this force ensures that these Never people process. are flushed from Not that just area. a standby, but so, a full-time. Yeah, a full-time mm. force. You have to negotiate with the Congo government mm. and mm. ensure that there is a full-time force that can do that. Unfortunately, we withdrew, charged for bad manners, and uh, we couldn't go back. Now we go back in another style that the ADF is now fully charged in Congo. Mm. So for me, I still believe that surely the ADF is not as strong as we are magnifying it. And many times we do propel things that are not there and eventually we give them a form. In mm. Congo, the mm. ADF is not as mighty as it is to warrant that our No, but the force the, the, the UPDF is confronting is 70,000 strong. So the now, question is, who are they? That is why I'm saying that uh, the, the force that is there, mm. that the UPDF is confronting, is not ADF. Interesting. Okay. I need to, to bring in uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you see what is being shared here and uh, of course there the, is the, the, almost a consensus that uh, it's, a, it's really a proxy. There is nothing you people are following up. That, is it true? If it is ADF, it's the not. The structures, we need to know who are they, what are the structures, what is the leadership, what is the real grievance that uh, really is out there that uh, would warrant us to go to Congo. <sighs> Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to make a dis uh, disclaimer that at this moment, mm -hmm. we are in the heat and feel of this operation. So many information may not be de declassified for now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so, so much. I found that you have, I would, you, you uh, have concluded the debate. <laughs> <laughs> so I may... I may appear like <laughs> ignorant or I may appear like I do, <laughs> but that is it. Secondly, is that I'm honored by the, our two panelists who have the detail about Congo, especially the geographical and the, the community dissection. Mm. Uh, Ediga knows that I know the world very well. Ediga knows I've been working for you in the world for eight mm. years. Mm. So I know the 193 countries very well. But unfortunately, my neighbor Congo, I don't know the dynamics very well. But it's good that they are here. So again, that hinders me a little bit. Mm. But suffice to say that uh, at the moment, the intelligence finding is that there are hostile forces 
against us. Mm. Whether it comes out at some later stage, when our army has conquered the forces, <laughs> or they have been, another people, or they have been conquered, then that will be. Of <laughs> <laughs> well, course, they won't, because now, if as Sedika says, if they're seventy thousand strong, mm. definitely in the course of operation, they'll be captured, they'll mm. surrender, will discover their documents, they'll all those practical things will come up, and then they will be uh, known who they are. Mm. But for now, we take the official narrative <laughs> that uh, mm. our intelligence finding is that the bombings that were here are planned, perfected in Congo mm. with ADF. Mm. If ADF says it is not us, let them put up their hands and say it is not them. Mm. But, but have, you, have you had them issue statements mm. over this war? No. Mm. Have you? Mm. Have not. Have not. No. That's the question. Mm. So, how, how do you engage a belligerent who is, who is not responding mm. to your media? They are on the run. And so the, now, the information has not been declassified as yeah. you have, you, we stand guided. Mm. So <laughs> we stand by the official narration <laughs> that uh, we have a hostile force in Congo and we believe <laughs> to be planning executing, executing the Uganda uh, and that those same people we believe there. Mm -hmm. uh, ADF. Yes. So that is the official position. Mm -hmm. The other thing I wanted to say is that uh, I, I don't be in a hurry with the timing as far as I'm concerned because the two persons mm -hmm. you can actually surrender my time because mm -hmm. I have known them to know the details of this uh, Area. dynamic. So mm -hmm. I would benefit from their, uh, mm -hmm. their information. Okay. So don't worry about it. Worry about the congressman. He's still with me. What about the Congress? Yeah. But, but for me, but, but we, we, we banned quite... UPC 1986. What, what are they still doing? <laughs> 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 so don't worry about my time. My time, you can do it. As a presence in Congress. He has handed over. Joseph, I am much obliged to have found your wheelchair. And understood. Where are we in this? Is it a proxy? Do we do you, do you know of any information about the yeah, existence? I, I think I, I think this is a, a delightful panel. Mm. I just like uh, Paul has said. I uh, was going to say that um, I would give um, uh, thirty percent of my time to Edgar <laughs> earlier, and then another ten to to uh, to. to to what honor do I deserve this, <laughs> <laughs> this treatment from this eminent to, 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 to pay back? But, but no, in context, this is the thing. I find it actually extraordinary. I think it's extremely important that we had this panel. Mm. Um, although Paula has been rather generous with its time, I think Paula is here both as NRA, uh, NRM government regime representative, an experienced operative of the NR NRM Secretariat, and so therefore a political spokesperson, including head of external affairs, <coughs> regardless of the whole thing, he should have slightly much more idea about what's mm. going on, including in Congo as director of external affairs, mm. than anybody else, number one. But number two, I totally understand <coughs> the point that Edgar has been very generous to them by trying to wrap it up. You know, at this stage in the course of war, it's absolutely not true that you can talk about classification uh, of very basic information. Uh -huh. You know, this is, you know, it's absolutely not the case. I have been lucky to have been a very senior official of the British Labour Party at the time when the Brits and the Americans were going to beat uh, Iraq. So it's it. extremely <coughs> impressive how these guys, I mean, it's everything else they played. Now, mm. I want to teach these guys how to do nationhood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in class. This is absolutely I want to learn. Mm. What I, regardless of whatever happened, for me, <coughs> regardless of whatever else was happening. Re remember, he, he has intention, his intentions on being commander in chief. Mm. So Indeed. you you reserve this. You better listen Indeed. to him. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, I'm That's listening. No, look, it's absolutely <coughs> the responsibility of Mr. Museveni, you know, to have come up prepared this nation state mm. to a possibility of a conflict. Mm. Structurally, mm. we pay the guy to do so. You know, prepared the nation that we are going to commit your boys and girls to war. What we need to try to hit. Mm. We are going to subject this country to a possibility mm. that some of your citizens, our citizens, will die. 
to a possibility, not really a possibility, to the fact that we're going to waste billions, possibly may end up being trillions. No war, you start, you don't know when you end. Mm. You know, in Congo. West? <coughs> you know? To, to, it's, it's, it could be West. We're going to spend, whatever the case. Well, Joseph, you, you, you usually use better language than that. <laughs> you, 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 you know, you know, I'm going there. And, and you're provoking me, but your brethren, my friend. You know, so huge amount of money is going to be lost. You know, mm. and it's your money. You know, uh, this is the logistics, equipment, everything else. Even if nobody comes back sick, tired, or possibly at worst case dead, I also challenge the Ugandan media that really, thus far, the fact that Uganda actually went out of Ugandan territories to go on an operation like this. Mm. We should already have had a situational report mm. of day one, day two, whatever the regime gives out to simply say there's a, there's a, a news blackout in Congo, fellow citizens, because that's what the media is there for us, you know, fellow mm. citizens. We are not able to get anything, mm. but on day one, we understand that they went ABCD. We understand one tank got lost. We understand, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, our, our boys really annihilated them, whatever the case. Systematically. That is a nation in a state of war. And a state of war because we are really in a state of war. Mm. If you consider the implications, the materials, and everything else, including <laughs> the revelations that Edgar Ed has given us, that it's true that they're in the semblance of some several thousand people, the other end whom we're fighting against. Mm. That's a serious issue. So should really, it should even be possible, to, if possible, to see more of a live feed of pre what is happening. So why pretend? Mm. So if it's the case that there are more than 10,000 people we're facing the other end, you know, for me, I would simply say, for the first time, I would say, NRA, you guys, yes, you know, you're fellow citizens beyond uh, the fact that you went to Luera and now in charge, something like that. Mm. Because generally, war, and I'm telling you, it again, free of charge, war usually rallies the nation together. Mm. Don't you see? It has actually attempted to rally the nation thus far until today. Except for me, the only thing is this one. If Museveni were, felt that this country was threatened beyond the bombings in Kampala, he should have been, and we had a discussion here, through you know, the, the, the police, something like that. It's ADF. These are the guys we captured. This is where these things are happening, coming from. We suspect these are the things. Actually, our nation is under threat. It's not only bombs in Kampala, but we suspect these bombs are coming out of Congo. Mm. As of now, we are still questioning who were the people who were throwing bombs in Kampala. We've not been told. Mm. How many of these guys? We've not been told. ADF, yes, we've been told ADF existed. And like when you say, these guys have been defeated several times. Were we being told a lie? How did they resurrect? You know? And, and, by, and the way, by the way, we even followed them up to Central African Republic to continue flashing them far away completely. from the borders of Uganda. Completely. I'll give you the dynamic to that if the time is given to me, but yes. Yeah, indeed. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> now, again, the Central African yes. Republic has the Vazira aspect, the Bazira thing he talked about. Mm. Yeah. So, but maybe sorry, sorry. after yes. Congress has mm. finished, there's the element that he raises, the element of the country not being informed. I don't know whether he wants to go the constitutional provision or something where he wants it brought in the forum of parliament or otherwise, but the UPDF has been giving information. There's been official statement issued by the Minister of Defense. Mm. through the official spokesperson of the ministry. And you will agree with me that the ministry is part of government and uh, the spokesperson is part of government. And they have been updated, including the first day. So you shouldn't really lose sleep about the country being <laughs> informed over that. Unless you're wanting it. I have a response to him, but I don't know how the moderator, yes, I, 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 how I, I, the moderator actually, wants to conclude. Let, 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 let me conclude, because I think this is extremely important to this country. Um, to the extent that actually, you know, just, just for the avoid of that, avoidance of doubt, including misunderstanding, that's absolutely the case. Mm. That if this country was going to go to war, mm. you know, mm. I'm simply saying that the country should be prepared formally. And part of the formality, because I was continuing, mm. was even supposed to ask mm. Parliament. You know, did, did he ask Parliament? You know, was there some kind of excess surprise that if we don't do today? There's a possibility that these guys were going to. Like, and, and that's like, the, that's mm. the bit I want to address. Yes. Like that mm. eminent thing from <clears throat> Colin Powell that needed to happen. <clears throat> was it that? And if is that the case, has Museveni now come and told us, no, we went in because if we didn't do it the other way, they were going to come back and perhaps this time attack Chris Towers like we ended attempted to attempt the other time when we were in the bush. Something like that. So really those are the things. And then so, ADF or not? Mm. Other forces, which forces? Congo, why Congo? And then three, uh, there's been some discussions about whether or not, you know, if uh, 
we are being threatened. You know, you've done the this mini policy man. I'm not even addressing the two key <laughs> dynamics. <laughs> the, 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 the characteristics of the regime in Kampala and the characteristics of the regime in Rwanda. And by the way, for the one in Rwanda, we UPC told you as a government mm. that this is the characteristic of this particular category. You know, should they overwhelm Uganda and then go ahead and take over Rwanda? And that's the reality. So it has come home to roost. You guys created it. Mm. But the anyway, point is this. I'm simply saying that, that uh, look, who, 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 who flagged it in, in, within your PC? Oh, we did. Who, who in, in particular? No, mention names. I give you back your hand. Uh, no, I, 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 I give mention the name. Actually, <laughs> he's mentioning a very critical aspect. Yeah. Mm. And the persons within UPC who flagged of what he's saying were actually ethnically from that group. That, can you imagine? Can you imagine? So these are people who knew the implications of what Edgar is saying. But, yeah, but Amon Bazira put it out straight, Clear. clearly. In yeah. print, Edgar, so, maybe, sorry, maybe to so, bring in Edgar, so yeah, but, I don't, but, hmm. um, no, I was simply saying conclusively this that in the very unlikely event that Uganda is being threatened by a force other than ADF, <laughs> it's possibly even the more reason why the country should be told there is a force inside Congo that we are fighting. Uganda's prepared, and, 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 prepare and, because you're praying for the long haul, yeah. prepare because actually we're a nation under threat. We need you guys to rally behind and, us. And, and, and I, I don't know how the moderator wants to moderate it. Yes. But, uh, I have Edgar, let me bring you in. No, yes. yeah. Edgar, uh, who sanctioned this war? Mm -hmm. And uh, possibly, if, if you, have that, you have that information, was in par Parliament really informed? Because now, it's a question uh, that's coming. Uh, 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 I mean, and if not, why not? Talking about parliamentary approvals and what have you, I am not an elected representative. Mm. Yeah. I told you I'm a lawyer and a revolutionary. And a revolutionary. Oh, that's it. That, 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 Revolution. would have, would have Revolutionaries asked, uh, don't care about They rules. don't care about procedures. They do their thing yeah. their way. Uh, before I was interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> before I was interrupted, I was attempting to mm. bring to the attention of the viewers mm. that uh, whether or not there's an aspect of parliamentary approval, mm. that should be addressed to the head of state who is an elected president? Mm. Who is an elected president? Allegedly, but anyway, that's the Who is an elected president? Yeah. Whether he was elected in, a, in accordance with your whims <laughs> or, or, or otherwise, <laughs> that is a different matter. Mm -hmm. Now, that question should be legitimately be put to the president or someone in a bunch on the floor of parliament as a leader of the government of government business mm. to make a statement. Mm. Or mm. someone, Sempija, mm. Honorable Vincent Bamrangeki Sempija, who is in the DRC right now, by the way. Mm. Is he? Yeah, he's in the DRC. Wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, over the same issue. Now, who sanctioned the war? Mm. U UN is on board. United States is on board. And their joint cooperation agreement between the uh, between uh, UPDF and Fardase forces amid the Republic du, <laughs> du Congo. Congo, Congo, Congo uh, uh, that French we, acronym. We, we, eh? we, we, we. Uh, by the way, the head of the Congo army is her relation. <laughs> Musense Mbali. No, the general the other side is Mbali. The general this side is Mbali. The other side is Mbali. Are they related? You guys are big, uh, man. Uh, <laughs> by the way, we run this region. I know you do. <laughs> you might think you are running things, but we are in charge of this region. But now, the jokes aside, uh, uh, there is a joint cooperation agreement that mm. was done with, uh, with the Republic of, of Congo. Uh, America came on board. Uh, France is on board, and the UN too, okay, did. A resolution was reached, was made? Uh, no, no, the UN Secretary General passed out. Because this is not, uh, uh, you, you know, it's not a, a UN peacekeeping mission. Mm. It's uh, a bilateral. But I'd like to add... So you can see. Yeah, it's bilateral, and it is permissible under international no, law. No, absolutely. So yeah. therefore, so, Uganda has just become now a front equipment for some other interests. No, 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 no. And that's why I'm disagreed with you. Mm. Eh? You know, the Congress... Uh, misconception mm. is the the use of the word bilateral to him hey. but uh, bilateral means a friendly thing no. bilateral here is using it to mean an affairs between two two nations, states not Multilateral. Not multilateral. You, 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 not multilateral. You, you know I know but these I know, terms. But, no, but your fear you know was clear. that. No, your fear, fear was is like, very political Your fear and was like it is a girlfriend, boyfriend thing. Mm. And that, that people to him, they, 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 they were the mind that it looked no, they like were diplomats in there. Mm. He's using it as opposed to multilateral. multilateral. But uh, there's even an aspect of multilateralism, only that the multilateral aspect is by consensus, not through... Uh, uh, the consensus are did them, eh? mm. meeting of the minds, mm. but not necessarily Through? related by mm. what? Uh, uh, ah, written document. Written now, document. I can assure you, SADAC is on board. Mm. Through Tanzania, mm -hmm. through Angola, and through South Africa. They are on board. 
there's no way you're going to carry out military operations in that area of the DRC without clearance from Burundi, without clearance from Tanzania, and clearance from... from uh, and from that was Tanzania. the latter part of my submission, uh, uh, Ale, for which I gave you time, but thank you for uh, qualifying but, but, in part. No, but you see, question. You, you're coming from a wrong premise. Mm. No, I'm coming from you a know, very nationalistic political position. Which is very okay, mm. but you see your lenses. The lenses, your lenses were made in the United Kingdom of Great Britain, and Northern Ireland. No, not now, Gongera. Uh, well, you may that, those are your roots, but the, the, <laughs> the, the, the lenses you acquired are from that side. Now, Great Britain has been a modern state for how many years? Maybe a, mill a millennium? And they've been a constitutional state since, 20, uh, since 1215. Now, their tradition is remarkably different from ours. But ours is decent. a nascent state. <laughs> we are still in the process of national building. And that's why I'd like to agree with my, with, with my contemporary at law school, Afande Awich, although he's a little older than me. But I'd like to think we are, our thinking is of the same age, uh, age bracket, uh, where he's being very, 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 very careful and restrained, mm -hmm. that there's information that has not been declassified. Mm -hmm. And so that background I'd really like to build on. Given the, the fluidity, uh, the fluid situation we have in the region, you can't have a head of state uh, of the caliber of President Museveni, going to mouth off certain things for purposes of declaration mm. of war. No. And, and, and I'm agreed with that with President Museveni. So, so we are really saying that Uganda is actually literally surrounded militarily. So it's a nation under threat. And so what these guys I, are trying I, to I do... Want, I would want the, uh, yeah. Edgar to, to make yeah. a, a final submissions. we we'll go for a short break, then mm. return to our second part. Uh, yes. Now... now, now uh, before I was interrupted, the point I was trying to build on is that we do not have the same luxury of the United Kingdom to go and announce on television that today we are going to hit Butembo. Tomorrow we are going to hit uh, Benny. Nobody suggesting eh? that. Uh, you, know, you said blow, uh, blow by blow account. No, no, no. Yeah. Accounts of the day as how, how was gone. That's what you do. Ah, no, that's, you know? uh, that's what I'm telling you. We do not have that kind of luxury because we are dealing with a very, very intricate situation here. Mm -hmm. And if you if I may tell you just a little bit, eh? uh, much of the war planning and, 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 and what have you was kept away from the public. Mm. Even the West, Western diplomats were, were kept second guessing. They didn't know what was happening. The strike at 3 a.m. Uh, Monday morning was carried out within, without the knowledge of many of the commanders in the DRC. It was just with, their, with their CDF. Mm. That is what I wanted to say. It was just with their CDF. That even the mm. country where we were going to attack... They were not in the north. And that's part of the point that you don't make. And so therefore you see uh, a privilege. You see, in yeah. execution of war, there are three aspects in execution of war. There's the strategy, there's the tactical, and there's the operation. Yeah? Now, uh, the strategy and, 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 uh, and, uh, and tactical are executed mainly by the, uh, the, the, the top commanders. Uh, operation is mainly the guy who's on the ground, Major General Muhanga and, uh, and the colonels and the majors and what have you that are on the ground. So, uh, in this case... Uh, I don't know what I can say and what I should not say. The, 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 the force we are confronting mm -hmm. has dynamics there you go. Of, <laughs> of what? Of, of other forces in the region. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Including the UN <laughs> who are embedded in this force. Mm. So, <laughs> I, I don't know how much more. I, I, so you just <laughs> want to conclude yes. that the force we are confronting is actually not only ADF. Yes, exactly. So our going there to pursue ADF, ADF is just used as... So the, Ugandans the should wake up. Yeah. So no, Uganda, no, no. that is the more reason yeah. why we should even be told as Ugandans. Absolutely. As to whether... No, 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 no. there's an ADF aspect in it. The yeah. ADF there's aspect, ADF we are not in. ruling it out. Yes, they are there. They are, we are not, of the We ADF. are not ruling out... No, just the, a quick one, uh, uh, Nyamahasa. Uh, yes. Ny Nyamahasa is... Uh, as I, as I also it's, it's an affectionate name we call the mothers of uh, Nalongos, yeah. Nyamahasa. Uh, remember, there were remnants of the ADF. Yes, I agree. About 200 of them who remained doing subsistence farming in what in the call. <laughs> I agree. Uh, now, <laughs> uh, those are... Uh, I may not know whether they are 200 or what. Uh, well, whatever I, number I, it I is, they are there. there. But I know the, the remnants are there yes. and they gave up and fighting now the ones and we they saw, are just now... The ones we saw doing farming. Uh, farming. The, the farming, subsistence farming. Yeah, Between themselves, they can't even afford a decent pizza. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, so it's not ADF. No, 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 no. There's not ADF embedded There is ADF in it. There is ADF embedded in it. But really, it wouldn't have warranted the going to call. Now, the guys who are bombing us here, 
uh, mm. from information mm. that is, is seeping. Actually, the, 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 the official information mm. that these were what? Ex-combatants of the ADF. Now, I've had opportunity to represent some of, them. Some of the people and they got amnesty. Uh -huh. I'm not supposed to divulge colored mm. secrets, but mm. there's, there's what they call an overriding principle of public importance. Yeah. Yeah. There are certain things that can bring to the attention of the yes. public without bringing out, without uh, breaching yeah. 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 They are applied for amnesty. for amnesty. It was granted. It was granted by the Amnesty Commission, chaired by Justice Peter Keronega Onega, chairman of the Amnesty Commission. Uh, Kanova Saliza is also, you remember him, he was with you in Parliament, yeah. he's a member of the same commission. It's a statutory commission and they handle matters on a case, case, case by case basis, send it to the president and you're, got, you're given a certificate of amnesty. Now, unfortunately, the dynamics involved in the ADF is that there was a first group. You remember Commander Benz to Shave? So who is the leader? By I'm, the way. I'm coming to it. I'm yeah. coming, coming to, to it. it. I'm coming to it. Commander Benz, Major Chigundu. There are, there's that group that were granted amnesty. But a person like Commander Benz was captured in combat. By Mawa Muhind. Yeah. Your, your cousin. Yes. Eh, your cousin. By Ma mm. Captured in combat. Mm -hmm. eh, and, and many others. So some were, 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 were what do they call it? Disarmed. Uh, disarmed and uh, what is the word? DDR. De Disarmed. Demobilized. Demobilized and others resettled. Now the likes of Chigund were absorbed in the UPDF. Now uh, Commander Benz went to operate in Kamwenge. I think he was embedded as an auxiliary unit of, uh, of the intelligence services. So he went to encourage others to what? To come back. You remember this chairman of Kamwenge, of, uh, Kamwenge Town Ch Council? Change. Ka Kamwenge Town Council. The one, mm. the one who was... Uh, the, one, the, the one who was... The one what? who was tortured. Uh, the one who was hospitalized for injuries. He <laughs> was tortured. <laughs> the one who was tortured. Yeah, yeah, he was, uh, yeah. You know, he was actually one of the jail forces that were encouraging others to come. Now, there are dynamics involved in that. When it came to, to, to demobilization and resettlement, mm. uh, they, they, are certain, they failed to cope in civilian society. They failed to cope in civilian society. And uh, I have no evidence to this, but there's a word. That the money that we are given to them did not trickle down to the what? To the beneficiaries. To the beneficiaries. They remained at the top. The true so desire. they returned to one, a community that was rejecting them because they were rebels. Mm. Two, they failed to fit in. Not like Chirevu. Chirevu was operating two border borders as, as his source of livelihood. But then he was also in the mosque operating as either a mualimu or a... I don't know those ranks in the, in the, in the, in the masjid. Mm. Now, they return to the same conditions that radicalized them into bigots and the jihadists. So, on part, there's a failure of us mm. as a state not to fully rehabilitate these people and provide yeah. them psychosocial support psychosocial to enable support. them to reintegrate in what? In society. in society. So, to that aspect, yes, these bombs that have been going off, mm. ADF is involved. And the ADF is flagged as a terrorist organization by even the United States. Yes, I And that's know. why you get now the United States being involved. Now, the area, the force we are confronting in, in North Kivu, uh, Grand and Ituri. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe. Yeah. Yes, brother. Your body language is very telling. You got a yours. <laughs> no, I'm really trying to restrain myself. <laughs> and uh, I think let me stop here. Mm. Uh, yeah, okay. Let, right there. Let's mm -hmm. have a short break. And of course, uh, to our viewers there, I hope you are enjoying and following the conversation around our invasion and of course our... our no, no, it's not invasion. Yes. Our military, our combat activities in the DRC. You, you, you in really the could, no, no, you really could be the next, you could be the next <laughs> boxperson for NRA. No, not invasion. Uh, with our, with our, pleasure. Our, if it's... Our, 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 our gladness serve my country mm. in that capacity, if it's for purposes, of our securing our people and, 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 and taking the others. And as you, as you are, I hope you're following, and of course, you're learning and of course, um, <laughs> getting to, to, to know the dynamics of uh, our operations in, uh, in Congo. And hope we'll learn much more from this uh, conversation going forward. We still have a lot that is coming through uh, the second half of our conversation. And of course, follow our conversation on uh, YouTube, uh, Civic Space TV. Please follow, <coughs> like, uh, subscribe out there. Put your comments. Uh, we also need to, to capture them and share with the, with the people out there. Of course, on Twitter, 
on chat show UG on our hashtag. There's a conversation. <coughs> Please be part of this conversation. Let's know what is happening in the country. Let's know what our operations mean to the country and of course to the unit to to the region. So of course in this short break I will we'll return. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back from the short break, and of course we are uh, continuing with our conversation on, uh, of course, of our, our, our visit to to to, to Congo and in the, pursuit, in the pursuit of uh, of ADF. Yes, we will need to give it all the good words so that we we ensure that. Uh, uh, we are patriotic. We, yes, we, are, we stand I, I'm surprised you think who is a Tea Party. Kindly follow into the conversation we are on. Of course, uh, on our YouTube channel, we are streaming. We are, we are on Facebook, are live. We are on there. But also today, is uh, we are marking, it's a human rights day. And uh, yeah. I will need to, will, at some point, I will give uh, a, a minute to, to each one of us on the, on the panel, our guests here, to, to say, uh, what how far we've gone as a country in protecting human rights. But so, also, so you basically want me to contradict myself. Then, <laughs> then, then on the issue, the, the issue of uh, why, why is it that uh, towards the, the Human right. Rights Day, that's when we're also seeing sanctions that are that are being levied onto our, our UPDF officers. Is, is it in a way of, of also commemorating the day? <laughs> we need to have all this. UPDF should also, <coughs> Uganda should retaliate by sanctioning United States officials yeah, no, involved no, no. in human rights violations, Guantanamo uh, Bay. Uh, who is the other person there? You should the, just put a disclaimer <laughs> in, that you have an interest in this war. In the, oh. <laughs> so let me get to. Let me get to. <laughs> our, our, I, our, I, I explained myself, Joe. You are being unfair to me. Let me get to. I, our, I disclosed my interest at the beginning. Okay. Let me get yeah. to Afanda Witch. Afanda Witch. What is our mandate in the in the, in the DRC? Mm -hmm. Because one would ask, why isn't it isn't it proper possibly for us to equip the the, the DR uh, uh, military for, mm -hmm. to, to ensure that at least possibly they would do that that uh, work for us in there? But also importantly, is oh. the suspect of timing. You know why now? You know if we knew, wouldn't it, wouldn't we have preempted and and really visited uh, uh, Congo earlier? He's, not, he's saying you shouldn't call it a visit. Shouldn't we have attacked our um, I, I, I started right from the beginning that uh, uh, I was comfortable giving my colleagues the time. Mm -hmm. I hastened to add that I would only be guiding to see that it's only on the philosophy of NRM and the particular manifesto running for five years. Mm. The rest, me, I'm okay to, to, to listen. But now that you put this question to me mm. on the issue of mandate, uh, we at war, our uh, security threat is there, mm. it's threatened. Now, the mandate inside another sovereign state, mm. uh, we cannot claim to have a, a, a mandate outside another sovereign state on our own. Mm. So, grammatically speaking, our mandate is anchored on the understanding that we have an understanding between the, them, their government and this one, mm. their government and our government. And you saw the military chief flying here, and a lot of other things have been done, both oral and written. So that gives us the mandate to be there. So we are really uh, with the full knowledge and appreciation of the host country. So if that is what you view as mandate, mm -hmm. And then I think that is it. So we are not illegally there. We are legitimately there. Uh, legitimately for our own security reasons, but also the legitimacy measured from the other side by the host country. So the, 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 core, the two legitimacy meets and gives us the mandate. Mm -hmm. Now, about the timing uh, as to when, why it is now or in future <laughs> or in the past, uh, there are many dictates uh, that come up in the security matters. Mm -hmm. And as you are aware, we have a fully-fledged intelligence system which gathers information, gives it to the right people for consumption, and the interpreters are there and decision makers are there. So this formed the opinion as to when and why. So as I said earlier, uh, so many things have not been declassified now, but for now, prudent to say mm -hmm. it was imminent, it was unavoidable. So so many factors have formed the opinion as to why now. Yeah, uh, I find that, you know, it's almost three times we've been in Congo. 
Is it that all the time anything, any 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 attempt mm -hmm. on our country would warrant us to go there all the go. time? We shall, we shall always be visiting them. No, not mm -hmm. only in Congo. Mm -hmm. We have had we have had security threats uh, which span to southern Sudan. We were there. Central African Republic. We have had security threats which goes to Central African Republic. Somalia. We have been there. Somalia. In fact, in the case of South Sudan and Central African Republic, much as we even went there physically, you are aware that it reached a point where we couldn't even satisfy to the extent that we went legal uh, to the point that we had to approach ICC to say that we have moved there. The guys are out of our jurisdiction. We can't get them. We would have brought them to our courts in Kololo. You are aware that similar court is in Kololo. But we're saying we can't get them. some so elements of the LRA. Mm -hmm. Who was it? Uh, not not was it Odiembo? Mm. Who, who 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 first tried out the ICC? Oh, there's this uh, not Odiembo. No. There's uh, oh, Koyelo. 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 Yeah. Yes. Dominic. Yeah. Dominic Koyelo. Dominic is the one who went. He's in the ICC. Yeah. But Koyelo. Okay. There are two first tried here. Yeah. Koyelo. Then Brigadier, Brigadier Banya got amnesty. Yes. Mm. yes. So it is not true that we only have problems and go to Congo. Mm. We are just saying that we need our peace, we need our sovereignty. And where our peace is disturbed lies from, we go there. Mm. And I, the <laughs> list is long, where we have gone, including, as I said, not only going militarily, but even going uh, legally. Mm. Uh, you are aware that there are many modes of indictment to ICC. Mm. It can either be referred by Security Council, like in the case of Bashir, but also you can be taken there by a complaint by a sovereign state like Uganda did complain. All so. individuals like Winnie taking, like taking a like, way yeah. like Taking a way Not only way so, mm. we Which was resounding in the countries mm. and uh, uh, I think no, uh, can continue to move. Uh, but which mm. which uh, complaint they presented and was resoundingly resolved in favor of the state of Uganda? I may mm. not say it was in favor of the state of Uganda. When that, they actually. have told them there was murder, there was a ruling, I there think. Was a yes. ruling. But let us, that, the, that ruling, the, the, ruling. Ru the ruling was... Then I would want to ask uh, Afanda Witt again. Let's that aside yes, of this. Uh, yeah. Afanda Witt, is that uh, how long do we stay there? Do we have any timelines? <laughs> Two factors decide. <laughs> uh, our security threat decides, but also, also anchored on the, the, the host country. So these two factors have to be considered. Or even, if you want, logistics. But... Uh, so I can say that logistically, the security threat here and the host country's perception are factors that form now long or when we get up. At the moment, we can't tell. Uh, Honorable, do you think this is uh, the, the, uh, going to, to, to Congo is, uh, is uh, in a way economically viable for us to do the costs that are involved into, into that? And of course, we already also have already 10 billion that we need to pay and what if anything no, the happens came the down. cost yeah the, so no, the whether, cost came whether, down. Down. whether came down whether the cost 400 million the, whether the cost came down or it didn't come down mm. may i told you from the word go that really i'm not believing that we went there in pursuit of adf if we put adf into the magnifying lens and saying we are going there to pursue adf Ediga did mention some facts that could have caused maybe the blasts in Kampala, which mm. subsequently caused our government to go to Congo. And I concur with him. But my own understanding is that possibly we flagged FDF, ADF mm. so that we get international recognition and accept, acceptability by the other regimes which know... Did you say FDC? ADF. <laughs> but, but, sorry for cutting you short, for interrupting you, and uh, forgive me, Nyamahasa. Yes. In this Congo thing, there's a lot of FC in it. <laughs> <laughs> you PDF, uh, you PDF say, other Fs, other Fs. Uh, other all right, Fs. All right. So, with, then with, ADF. with all those <laughs> Fs, with all those Fs, <laughs> FDC is not into this. <laughs> for heaven's sake. Uh, but there's another with, F in F, the region. Yeah, <laughs> FDC is only... Is struggling <laughs> to ensure that the seven goals <laughs> so that we can have a stable country. Mm. But coming back to where we are, now the, the war in Congo, I told you from the word go that I think we are using ADF so that those who know that ADF is listed among the terrorist actors can come on board. Mm. But for Uganda to settle from here, I'm speaking as a mother, he has been referring to me as Nyabahasa, and indeed, I am a mother, I am a wife, and a leader. Mm. 
Mm. As a mother. You are a leader. Yes. And you are a teacher. Too. As a mother and as a leader and as a wife, I would have expected more. That my country would have said, yes, we are taking your husbands, we are taking your children. This is the magnitude of the threat. Mm. We don't need to have all the details. But this does have the basics. Yeah. This is the magnitude of the threat. And we believe that if we don't string into action, this is likely to happen. Mm. I told you from the word go that my heart is for Uganda much more than anything else because I'm Ugandan. Mm. Though I have roots in Congo, but my home is Uganda. Mm. So we expected a real government. The only problem I have with my government is that it, it doesn't have any regard for institutions mm. and the people themselves. It, you were the leader of the official Yes, position. I was the leader Why of the... Why did you create them in I your time? <laughs> they are not mine. I, I struggled to ensure that we create them by denying <laughs> President M7 to run again for office. And well done for those attempts by the... Yes, I attempted because I knew that if we have sounding institutions well, that work... I, 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 I didn't see you breaking microphones, Honorable Winnie. <laughs> well, it's not I, her way. She's like a pacifist I, like you perceive. We don't believe I, in breakage. I, I had a team that was in charge that, that of that. That was breaking the microphone. I had a team. <laughs> Me, I believe in working with institutions. So if I have created an institution in charge of that, mm. I don't have to go and do it myself. So I just want, I just, I just want to say that uh, the only unfortunate bit that we have as a country is that we have a leadership that ceased to operate within institutions of government, the ones that we have. That is why you would find that the Minister of Security would not even be aware mm -hmm. that there is a deployment and also was still asking by the time <laughs> the forces went. Mm -hmm. Two, <laughs> the parliament of Uganda, the people's representative, the people anywhere that you are defending, should have known why we should go and say, yes, we are under threat and therefore we need money. Because I know finally they will come to parliament to say we need a supplementary. So they should be prepared. You, you, we are going to have more than two supplies. Yes, they the should be prepared year. that we are going for war and our country needs money if it means borrowing it to secure the, the boundaries of Uganda and therefore the population of Uganda, let's borrow, whether supplementary or not. So Mia even wanted my government to go ahead and give us the... We want money because we are going to do ABCD. But the fact that they didn't do that I know our children will die there, our husbands will die there, and nobody will look at their families. Mm -hmm. Nobody will want to know the fate of the children of the officers who are in Congo. Mm -hmm. So, like uh, the Honorable, Congress... are you saying there's no provision for, to take Wapi, care of I have, fallen comrades? I have been dealing with the widows of mm. fallen comrades and combatants. And Paul, Paul, I'm, I'm dealing personally, even in my formal capacity in my as UBC leader. In my I'm dealing with cases as, of victims of war, including yes, the world displacements. I'm dealing in, in with my not capacity even as a woman member of parliament. I am parliament. dealing with them already. In my capacity as a woman member of parliament, I encountered many of these. But this. you provide budget for that. And does it reach? Does service. it reach? You they had some. You, you had service. someone so telling did, you. We didn't qualify the point. Wait. <laughs> you had someone telling you that even the money that was allocated to mm. resettle mm. those who applied for amnesty did not reach them. Uh -huh. mm. So even the money that goes to the victims of these insurgencies and possibly those who die yeah. in combat, mm. they may hardly get the money. We see these people on a day-to-day -day basis. So for me, I'm maybe, saying... Maybe that's why the president, even these, these massacre instances, he had to hand over the... The, the man himself, himself yeah. where well, like... So that is his institution, so that, his institution in his hand. Yeah. But, so that, but is, and it, you know, is it not true that we have thieves within and outside of government? Yes, they are there. Where do they come from? From us? <laughs> I am, I am, they are amongst our population. They are amongst and our population. And whom do they still with? I am, I am saying And they are the ones who are who's, who's, who's their boss? In churches? Now, their boss for, is his commander in chief. For me, it? what I'm saying... The boss is a politician. He has what, what, I am, what I am saying <laughs> is that I speak for these widows and orphans mm. of the combatants who may find their death in Congo. Mm. And therefore, the reason why the population from whom these mm. people come mm. should be informed yes, that look we are yes mm. we are going to war 
chances are that your sons and and husbands may not come back mm -hmm. be prepared the reason why he was calling upon maybe ugandans to rally behind the troops mm -hmm. so that those of us who can pray we pray for our troops mm -hmm. those who can give them moral support they give them moral support mm -hmm. and we know that as a country we are dealing with an issue that is so sensitive but we reach congo and we are in a situation where we can't withdraw we can't go forward mm -hmm. because the force is bigger than what we expected mm -hmm. Mm -mm. So somehow, well, I don't know, or I just wanted to say either it is bigger than what we expected or we have even spent much more than we should have spent because the force is maybe smaller than we mm -hmm. anticipated mm -hmm. and we have wasted all these resources. So to me, I There's still, no shortage of resources. To me, I is, well, it might not look like it is wasted, but you know now when you are killing a mosquito and you are bringing so, a whole other... Uh, PG um, to kill a mosquito. Really, you will have no, wasted uh, honor, resources. Honorable Winnie, you are being I, a politician. In I this am case. not doing a politician in this yeah, case. Let's, let's I'm not that. being a politician because yeah, she knows what is mm, happening. You no, yeah. not that. That it was. Oh, that maybe you are saying you have not been told. I am saying officially. I, I am saying I have not been told officially. You never know. I don't know, and I, I yeah, told yes, you, you that right I'm to... debating from mm. that point. Okay. Mm. That we were not told as Ugandans the magnitude of the matter. But that I also know that my leadership in Uganda continuously told us we have dealt with ADF. Mm. And it is yes, yeah, that is on record. Yes, and, and, and that's... as uh, uh, the Honorable Witch has told us, uh, Major Witch, the official position is that we have the official position is that ADF was defeated. Yes, the official position is that we have gone after ADF in the Congo. Yes, <laughs> so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> so if you, if you defeated them and you are going <laughs> after them, what do we believe? Mm. And when you leave us with those questions as a population, mm. we cease to trust you. You know, you can't say A and you call it B and you think I'll now be on the same page with you. So if you want me to believe you, explain it further. Mm. Yeah. So we wanted to have this information so that when we are talking, those of us who know the area that is now under our control mm. in terms of security, we know that ADF really, active ADF and very strong ADF, is not as mm. so powerful as we assume it is. And that is why, from my own way of thinking, you may call it politics, but the way I feel about it is that possibly we hyped ADF so that we get recognition, mm. so that we get the support of others who may feel anchored and feel threatened by the presence but, of But the ADF detonated, detonated bombs in yeah. Kampala. It now, that is also another issue, mm. Ediga, that ADF is detonating bombs in Kampala. You have not told but us whether you have they, flashed. They, no, no, but are they the ADF? We, they have because not spoken. Is there evidence that they are ADF? They have not Kampala? spoken no, that no they evidence. are ADF. But if they are, can I, I we think, know? I think they, 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 they took spoke. responsibility of, of that. They, well, they, if, they, if they, they did, they, if did. they, they took, took ADF took they, responsibility. Yes. They, should, they posted it on their internet. Yes. It was, now, it was in me, Arabic characters. Let me, let me, well, I don't, I don't know how to read that. No, but it was, there's but a, there, there if are they, if they have admitted, all I know mm -hmm. is that as a country, we even wanted to go to Congo earlier. Mm. As a sure? country, yes. That is, well, as a country, that is unique to you. That is, uh, yes, as a country, that we had even to wanted to go to Congo. Unique submission, but it's common knowledge. It is common knowledge <laughs> that we wanted to go to Congo earlier than <laughs> <in> the bombings. <laughs> yeah, and then, clarification. first, well, let me first finish. <laughs> uh, I would have loved <laughs> that as a country, possibly, even in the pursuit of the rebels in Congo, mm which I say is okay because we need to secure Ugandans, we yeah, need to true. ensure yeah. that all Ugandans are safe, including those who want to bomb anyway, because they are those who are forced into these situations because mm. of the circumstances. Mm. We still want to say, can we correct the economy of the country? We still want to say, can we reach out to the Ugandans who feel maybe lost opportunities, who feel they are disgruntled, and we see how we touch them to let them appreciate the beauty of our country before they even go into this ra radicalization and all yeah. that kind of stuff. I would have loved that possibly now the country has said we have flushed off all the, the units in Kampala mm. that are responsible for the bombings. Mm -hmm. After flushing them out in the city, the next move, the next move would be the, going oh. to Congo. Mm. But if they are still within Kampala and we are running to Congo, which we've been done, done. 
we don't know what they will remain doing here after we have taken our, our troops to mm. Congo. So can we deal with the question maybe the, 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 the report around Kampala. Yeah, remind yeah. Yeah. Me, and yeah, then, it reminds me of the time when uh, Kazini was the chief of staff. Uh -huh. And we're deep inside Congo. <laughs> Allegedly to pursue ADF. To, 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 to pursue ADF. Yeah, but ADF was attacking. <laughs> ADF was attacking in the Semuliki Valley as we were deep in Congo. Yeah. So we may go deep mm. into Congo and we leave the real problem here. Mm. As we pursue them the other side, mm, they are bombing. Yeah. But that's what, they call pre, that's what they call a preemptive strike. Mm. Well, is this you a preemptive do a pre strike? I don't know. I think uh, I mean, that, 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 from, uh, that, that, from that, Damian, we, yes. we, we, we can question uh, aspects of execution, war policy, mm. but execution of strategy and operation really would be speculating, uh, Honorable Winnie. Sure. But, yeah, but it's, not something, it's not something to it boast is, about. It is really. not something that... Uh, we... Because it really we are trying to present Uganda as if Uganda is this kind of expert warmonger in the region. The only country where <laughs> if there's a bombing... <laughs> then you're right. I, 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 know, I know why Joe is going okay, in that let's, direction. Let's, let's, let's get some questions. I know. From, 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 uh, Joe, we'll get Joe is going in that direction because mm. he wants to preempt my next strike. <laughs> <laughs> he's basically labeling he's me a whole manga. He's doing it preemptive. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's, let's so the clarification I'm making is uh, first that uh, in this chart we are being watched by the whole world. Yes. Mm. So we need to make things so authentic. Now, uh, it's em emanating from Honorable Winnie's comment. And Joe, on the status of the, the widows of the deceased yes. the soldiers, mm. I want to make it clear that there's an N uh, NRA or uh, UPDF Act, and it has terms of conditions there too, mm -hmm. which states from recruitment mm. to burial mm -hmm. of a soldier. Mm -hmm. It is very elaborate. Mm -hmm. And that every year, Parliament appropriates an annual budget mm -hmm. to Ministry of Defense mm -hmm. for this. Public service is a ministry completely outside defense, but public service does the record like any other school teacher mm, mm. or medical doctor involved in, in, employed by government is paid when he dies? So these procedures are very elaborate. There the is a, the, there's so, a directorate so, of pensions and, and gratuity, gratuity under Brigadier Nangweso. Yes, there's, there's Na, not Nangweso, Nangweso. So, so the so issue is public say, service incompetence. I wanted, right? I want to say that mm. we are very elaborate as a country and as a, a, an army with an act of parliament. Regulations there too, which guides all this to the, to the dot. Mm. So I'm saying this because the lack of this information or unclarity can have lack of morale on the troops, mm. but how I will die and my children. Mm. Two, also that we take this opportunity to educate those who may not know mm. that there are these services and provision under the law, very elaborate, and budgeted appropriated for every year. So I want to make that clear so that we don't seem to be working in a vacuum or lack of unclarity for the event of fallen comrades. Are you saying what Edgar said earlier? Ed, Ed, oh, Ed no, Edgar was very specific, my child. Not, mm. It wasn't even before, before winning. Was, was his uh, submissions baseless at the time? That when he was actually talking about uh, some of these uh, ADF guys who were demobilized. No, that is not under the act. It's not under the act. It is not under the act. It's not under the act. It is 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 Let me make it clear. Let me make it clear. Let's have one by one. One by one. Me, I am talking from a point of information. I mean a point of knowledge. That I have dealt with these widows. The widows of fallen combatants. Going up to that extent elaborately going through the systems and reaching a time when they tell them open up accounts. They open up accounts. But on opening up accounts, they take forever mm. to receive the money. There are some that I'm even still dealing with, with lawyers. I've had to hire lawyers for them mm. to no. chase mm. those who have refused to give them their ter the terminal benefits. No, I, I, I get you what you're saying. That is now an isolated inefficiency. That uh -huh. For example, so you're calling it isolated. I met somebody who told me he was a chief in Mukono before Mukono became a district. The district. Those big chief. He said, he has, I met him in public service. He says he has been in public service since he has not got that money. No, you, so, you, you remember, there are many. Uh, so, uh, no, you remember so, when we were chasing uh, <laughs> late to justice in Yamuchoncho's money? Yes. Yamuchoncho was a member of the presidential commission in yes. uh -huh. 1970. Uh, during the the uh, the, 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 the Muanga Muanga was it the military commission, commission? Yeah. Yeah. yeah 
And remember the late uh, Olua, was it Ogwa? Olua, 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 yeah, yeah. The, yeah, it does. So I, it, it, I it, also remember Saulo, Saulo Musoke. Yes. Who was president of the... Yes. Uh, so it is no longer an isolated yes, case. Yes, so it's not. So, it's not. no longer an isolated case. Yes. No, no, no. In, the, in the case of the president... No, we know it's there. It's no, in the, the, the case of the presidential the commission. Of the yeah. No, in the, the case of presidential commission. Because I remember... I don't know whether I'm divulging some secrets of the state. You took it up as a personal initiative. Yeah, After it happened, you, you attended the funeral service of Saulo Musoke. Yes. Where and the Deputy Chief Justice, Justice uh, then Deputy mm. Chief Justice, Justice Alice mm. Impaji brought it in mm. the what? So you, mm. that's when you picked it up. Mm. Now and I remember me, you, you came I and consulted. It's it's not, it was not by law. Actually, it was, the, it was, uh, what was ex -gratia. Ex -gratia. Ex -gratia. I'm now talking yes. in respect of these widows who are just villagers. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so, so the ones that have been representing so the parliament. In that yeah. case, who I, may not even know the procedure. They will come one day and go to the RDC's office and say, "Well, RDC, mm. this is what is happening." The RDC will you say, see, "Great." No, no, this is a possibility. Yeah, no, it's no, a possibility no, no, that it will happen. No, 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 no. no, no. I mean, it's a fact. From what you have said, you already have identified the problem. Yes. Yes. Now, now, let me tell you. Let me, let me first like tell you, Edgar. Let me first uh, finish this. Honorable, it's like have, having a gynecological problem. And you go to an eye clinic. Now, I have told you that I have even gone to the point where I have taken them through the right procedures. Uh -huh. They tell them open accounts. Mm -hmm. We are going to put your money on the accounts. Mm -hmm. Of course, after verifying whether they are the rightful mm -hmm. beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. the, 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 the money doesn't come. The, the money. money doesn't come. No, let me tell you what happens typically in the government. Money is a budget Under this NRA government. Yes, the money is budgeted. Even when Wolbote was minister nope. for, for, nope. for, for finance Absolutely in the 80s. Not. Eh? Absolutely uh, not. Typically, this is what happens in government. Uh, you've not had the benefit of working for government. Maybe with government, but not in government. I, I think that's a very good point. Yes. Typically, <laughs> typically, you, you, you'll, you'll budget. You'll budget. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the financial year, uh, CG, what date? When does the minister present the budget to parliament? 14th of, around 14th, uh, 14th by, June. By 14th. You know, usually around 12. 12, there's the, usually the budget and the state of the nation address. Mm. Yeah. Me, me, I concentrate more on the nation, state of the nation and address. And it is the, the one budget. that appears earlier than the... Uh, me, it's the state, state of the nation address okay. that I, I pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And President Museveni always mentions these security issues, including what we're talking about here. By the way, he yeah. does. Museveni never discloses his war what? plans. Because those are his pits. That is his life. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, well, he has executed much of, of that his adult ex life. Anyway, much of that's that. besides the point. What I'm trying to bring to your attention mm. that every year we make a budget layout. But what happens on, uh, when you hit the road running? Many things happen along the way. For instance, we made a budget last year. This is what we estimated. But we didn't anticipate that, would, although you are saying that we had. Uh, no, the they knew. No, 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 this is what I'm saying. So, because this is something that has not happened is, overnight. If the no. security is but very cautious. Edgar, Edgar, we have, we have now, we, we had started an ambitious project of constructing roads and all this. In, in, the, in, the, DRC. in the DRC. And that's what I want to address. And now we are getting another... You know, no, 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 this one, that's, that's what I want to project. No, that's what I want to address. I'm coming to that, I'm coming to that one. We shall agree that the stability of our motherland, Uganda, is very critical. Very. Very critical. And nobody is uh, We are also aware, that. whether we agreed or not, I know you'll not agree with me, that Uganda, under the leadership of President Museveni, is a kingpin of stability in the region. Absolutely Just not. Like, He's an agent uh, that, of external forces. Yes, yes. 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 I, 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 I said be, to the ground that you're going to disagree with It may be a kingpin of, <laughs> of regional stability, <laughs> yes. just like it is a kingpin of regional instability. Uh, yes. Well, it's the, the center of this <laughs> regional instability. <laughs> and now, the, 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 the kingpins of instability are the, are the, the spin-offs. Yeah. Are the spin-offs from the NRA. I'll not mention the group because of... <laughs> The sensibilities we are addressing here. The creators <laughs> of instability. Is here. The, no, the, the creators of instability <laughs> are President Museveni's protégés, but they are not within the NRA NMO. They went elsewhere. All but right, uh, right. <laughs> but uh, we see you, we hear you. You hear me. So uh, uh, really, I would like to inform the viewers that uh, the road project, the road projects that we are undertaking in the DRC are, are paramount and very critical hmm. for access to markets. DRC is quickly replacing. Uh, the Republic of Kenya, the Republic of South Sudan, as Uganda's biggest trade partner. And there I agree with you. Big, biggest trade partners. But uh, you'll be surprised. Uh, who are Uganda's biggest trade partners? Mm -hmm. You'll be surprised to learn who are Uganda's biggest trade partners. Within the region here? Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. 
talk yeah. to the whole world. The biggest trade partners of Uganda, United Arab Emirates, mm -hmm. and the Gambia. The Gambia? Yes, Gambia. I've interacted with the Gambian uh, Council General in Uganda. He's a Korean. And uh, this year alone, we have imported, uh, I won't mention the items, they might cause me a bit of, of issues because... <laughs> <laughs> we don't have them. Uh, no, the items are worth 250 million US dollars this year alone. Now, DRC, DRC, well, it's gold. DRC. We don't have them. <laughs> even gold. The, even gold. United Arab Emirates. Hmm. Even United Arab Emirates. It's it gold. Is gold. The same. Yeah. gold. <laughs> you know, I was asking targeted questions because I knew she knows, although we have not met. Mm. I know she has her. Intel. I, I know, I, I know, Honorable Winnie. And even though I've not been interacting, I've been. I've been getting information about her. But tell us why. <laughs> tell us why. <laughs> but of course, you expect, expect Honorable Winnie uh, with her position to, uh, to know some of these facts because she's been uh, the leader of but, 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 no, 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 yeah. What Winnie is not telling you, yes. she's a major player in some of these issues. Okay, but Edgar. I don't own a gold mine. No, 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 as a leader. I don't own a gold mine, but I know mm. that Uganda is now uh, no, a, a, major, uh, a major trader in gold. Uh, no, just like we're a major the, the trader the in timber the, when, the, we the don't have, elders, uh, when we the don't have woodlots. But the elders do consult Winnie. <laughs> they do consult her on some I, of these questions. I am not questions. an elder. <laughs> <laughs> and then the elders there consult you. Well, I have relatives who are elders, mm. and they know that we do bad manners do, in Congo. Don't they consult you? Maybe they may not be consulting, but we cross check. Mm. <laughs> 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 but I know we know that's besides the point. I did intend to put you on the spot. No, no I'm not to, being mm. on the spot. I, but I just want to also, I also said it from the word go <laughs> that some of my roots mm. are in Congo. Mm. I'm not denying the fact that. Congolese people are my people, yes. and the Uganda never comes. The Uganda never comes. Uh, the 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 Bandande. I, I hope people are listening. And, and there is a but, feeling, but, there's a feeling there's just because, there's, because no, there's absolutely no justification yes. yeah. for whatever the relationship. There's an absolutely no justification uh, for us to say that because of some of this interrelationship yeah, and the fact is, that Congo is going to be a possibility of a mm. new market for us. It's a very dangerous one for a Pan Africanist like you. I don't know. So I, I guess I, that because this is the I, thing. I, I wish you had should, permitted should, me to conclude should, my we discussion. We build a you road in a, mm. in, a, in, a, in a neighboring country as if it's a the, colony, and, and but is, building a, a road in a country for which we think is a regional strategic no, threat no, no, listen, because when, when I'm saying, when I'm saying, constrained. Yeah, yeah. Da, da, and this is my this, this is my my quarrel with Joseph, Mr. No, we Joseph don't. We never quarrel. I, I said this is okay. This is my disagreement with you. He is uh, you know <laughs> Westminster, Washington D.C., NATO, Axis orientation, police orientation conscript. He was conscripted no. into that uh, that thinking. No, no, no. I but just grew into some in, of the global things, <laughs> including China. You, you're conscripted. <laughs> <laughs> he was conscripted into that police orientation. <laughs> and that's, you see, that's why he's arguing the way he's arguing. And me, I'm arguing as a pan -Africanist. Very civil, very civil. <laughs> and very Africanist. <laughs> mm. I'm a pan-Africanist. And look here. A revolutionary... I am, a, yeah, I yeah, am a Pan-African, I am yeah. an Obotist Pan-Africanist. These guys are these so-called revolutionaries uh, uh, who believe that they use me. every military Joseph, to deal. Mm. Joseph, you know very well, I admire President Obote's no, policies. No, I've said it and no, you do, you do. I admire President Obote's policies. President Obote himself was involved in the DRC well, that's correct. through the Molele, uh, Molele, whatever. Mole, Molele, remember the Molele? The Molele. Mole, okay, you, that, she's pronouncing it in Kinande. Yeah. <laughs> Molele. <laughs> Molele. Molele. <laughs> actually, was it Molele? It, the actual word was Milele, mm. forever and ever, but they, they corrupted the word to say Molele. Molele. So Obote Molele. was involved in the DRC, and remember there were allegations that he was involved in gold, what? Which was, false. which was false. Which was false. Which was false. Which was false. I'm not going to go that. Mm, mm. And you see, th those falsehoods are the ones that are again being attributed to President Museveni. No, Museveni is build, very no, different. No, we are building roads for this purpose. Is, mm. Bunagana, <laughs> Goma, Ruchuru, Tembo. <laughs> You just have to go and see the volume of trade. Yeah, I can I can agree with you, Ediga, uh, that the volume of trade in those areas is perfect. And these roads, and, opening up these roads was and very And opening critical. up the roads is okay. Now I'm going to mention but things you've never you, heard you before. Talk, I'm going to mention things you've never <laughs> heard before. Now, in that area of the DRC, right from Ituli, eh? Bunia, Beni, Kasindi, Butembo, Goma, Rushuru, Goma, Uvira, Minembwe, up to Tanganyika province, that, that borders a bit of Lake Tanganyika and then the Bemba. Who are these Bemba of... Uh, of, of <laughs> the, one eat, the ones who eat monkeys. Mm. Of, uh, 
of northern Zambia. Mm -hmm. Now that whole area has been ungovernable. Now Kinshasa forgot all about it. People have been going with their business without care. We want to go and govern it now. Uh, mm -hmm. Please listen to me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, I have a house, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> so Kinshasa <laughs> gave up on them. Mm. In the last general elections, elections were not conducted in that area. Are you aware? They later conducted. Yeah, but under what? Yeah. Under what? Under what circumstances? Under what circumstances they conduct the elections? Now, the parties that dominate, uh, RCD used to dominate there. Mm -hmm. Now, RCD is a party led by a certain uh, Minyaronda speaking uh, person, is a doctor called uh, Eugene, mm -hmm. uh, Eugene uh, Ngayabaseka. Mm -hmm. uh, they dominated in both uh, Ara, uh, uh, Kivu and, uh, and, and, and South Kivu. Now, in this election, in this election, there came up tension between the Vanande and the, the Vanyaronda. Paluku, the Munande, the Munande, most, uh, most eminent Munande politician in that area, emerged as governor. And he's allied now to Shiskedi. Mm. Now, the Kinyaronda speaking populations there, we are pushing for secession for the rest of the DRC, encouraged by one of the countries in the region, and that country is not Uganda. I'll have to emphasize that. Now, the rest of the DRC, they term it balkanization. So, balkanization. Balkanization. So. so, they wanted to break away. Now, that area of the DRC is home to 133 militia groups. Some of the militia groups represent entities as small as tribes and clans. Even among the Vadande, they are divided by those ones from the hills overlooking uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the Lake Albert Alben, uh, uh, what? Graben? Graben. Yeah, even the, whatever, the Blue Mountains behind there, <laughs> behind the Rezoris, there are those ranges they call the Blue Mountains. Mm -hmm. Then the Virungas. Mm -hmm. Now, there's always been a contestation between them and the Kinyaranda speaking people. And they are now more, 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 more pronounced. So these militia groups operate their own territories. They collect revenues and run their own small governments. Affairs. Mm -hmm. Now they export minerals using external forces. Now I'm not going to go into details of the external forces, but UN and FADAC have been involved, FADAC have been involved in the same what? You same. find, to do business in the DRC, by the way, mm -hmm. you go to the customs agent, he'll tell you those are rebels, these are these. But you bring money, I'll take to the rebel, I'll take to the government, what forces. And, and you're comfortable conducting business. Now, it has, be, it has become very difficult for, for organized trade in that area. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so now, we go into it. Mm -hmm. Now, my, 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 my worry is that we are now in the DRC, we've tested the river the depth with the both legs inside. It's going to be extremely difficult for us to extricate ourselves from the DRC. We are going in for the long haul. <coughs> Our military spending is now the highest in the region. Mm. But I think Ethiopia could have overtaken Uganda now, but we are higher than Ethiopia. We are still higher than Ethiopia. We are still higher than Ethiopia. About 1.2, 1.2, 1.3% 1 of, our, of, our, of, our, of our GDP. Mm is on military, on, on the military, yeah, military expenditure. And I see it going higher up to 2%, mm. or if not 2.2% mm -hmm. of what, of our GDP. And you've seen the military hardware that has been, has been displayed. 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 A, a BM, BM-21 rocket launcher costs quite a sum of money. These mm. 272 tanks you're seeing, each cost $2 million. Sukhoi, mm. to fly a Sukhoi jet for one hour, $30,000. For one hour. I'm not the one saying it. He's the one saying it. That is what we wanted. Mm. Mm. To prepare mm. ourselves psychologically. In an already and struggling economy. In an struggling already economy. Yes. Struggling and there's a road Congo. being built in Congo. Mm. A road being built in Congo. Mm. And a Gongora to Tororo Road via Bosolwe, to up to Bosolwe Hospital. Yeah? Which was supposed to have been 
rebuilt by by UPC government in 1989 mm. is still hanging until sometimes I shout. Not 1969. Do they put it? It is a 1969 national national Na, plan. National plan. Na, but 1970 national plan but, by by Sam Odaka. But before after that, you know, I'm talking about the more recent. Just to be fair to this. 1989, day. you had left power. No, you were no, in exile. No, you. no, I'm saying no, no. As a part of project. So, no, no, no. As a part of project. You had to build the road. No, 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 in exile. No, 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 that's an important point. <laughs> mm. Between 1981 to 91, a 10-year pro plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This program was there mm. that by 1981, 1889, this road should have been built. Mm. So from Busol way, you know, from Nebanda's place up to Turo, <laughs> the road is now a, a road like to a no, Okay, but, 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 So that's the road in my place. Let me have a I have to shout. Let me have a Rika. And then we are building a new Now, let me, let me, let let me have a, just a quick recap to that. Let, 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 let me have yes. a quick recap to that. Mm. United States of America does give aid to developing countries. Yes or no? Yes. Through you said, America has a quarter of its population <laughs> living in poverty. So but strategically, let me, but let me first, uh, that investment bill there for me, I'm for it. Let, Those, me, let me tell in you. In fact, me, if I was in the government mm. and yeah. I had my way, I would construct a road from her village to Kisangani. It would be okay, yeah. Edgar. Mm. And I think it is even proper that he also talks about the misery the Ugandans are going through. Yes. Because yeah. you have mm. even highlighted properly the type of trade that we are involved in as a country mm. through the Arab Emirates and mm. uh, the Gambia. Which this, benefits a few. It is gold. Mm. The gold that we are trading in, very few of the Ugandans are involved. Are involved. I'm told it's even hardly taxed. And uh, the, That's the, the, criminal, the, you know? the dealers in that gold business don't pay taxes. Mm. So sometimes we may not, as Ugandans, benefit from uh, the real business that we are doing as a country. And I know that, yes, we shall even make it easier for ourselves to get gold from Congo using okay, the road. So, so uh, constructing the road will enable the maize you are growing in Kasese <laughs> to, to reach Butembo. If we, we, if we would... When, when, the the, are, when, no, when, when the roads are... When the roads are... You know why if, Paula if, wish if, gave me Because we are... Life, yeah. <laughs> We are working no, we on the, the same. We are working know, on the yeah. roads. To the same discussion. You know, but, but, yes, okay. it would be a good thing <laughs> to do those roads if we have prepared our people here mm. for production. For production. And exactly, that's what we ought to be doing. We no. should the have no. social no. transformation. We should no. have no. first worked on the minds of Ugandans, mm. prepared them for the big business, yes. and then we create their network within here to enable them to move the maize from their farms to connect to the Congo I, I published market. An Ed, Edgar. Uh, uh, but Major if we have not, I but I, I if we have not prepared the Ugandans uh -huh. to benefit the from the have you Congolese seen market, yes, I, have, have I, I need to read you it. Reviewed, and, uh, under UPC president, mm. in which I am, there is no circumstance under which troops of this country or cities of this country can go and deploy one mile of road in any country, you know, when in Karamoja, there's a place we call Nekapiri Peak. But you know, Edgar, let me give you a little bit of water, which is Just a quick one, just a quick one. You know the road from Mbale, Mbale, Mbale to, to, to Kapchoro? Uh -huh. Are you sure it was financed by Kenya? Are you sure it was financed by Kenya? As a donation? Yeah. A As a donation, I'm telling you, it was it's a donation. Right? Mm -hmm. It was a donation. Was it was a donation or a grant? Was it a donation? Listen to me, listen to me. <laughs> what, what is the difference between a donation and a grant? Don but yeah. it, it was. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I should mention some of these things, but uh, President Moi was Kalenjin. Uh, Kapchoro <laughs> is Kalenjin. <laughs> So, <laughs> so it's like building a school in Tanzania. So it's like building a school in Congo. Like it's building a school in Congo. It's like 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 that particular area in mm. Congo, because where we are building the roads yeah. is part of the area that Edgar talked about as being left out from left the out by the other side of by the, the other side of Kishasha. the other they forgot about them. and he said there is a struggle for some other country mm -hmm. to take charge mm -hmm. that so secession that yeah. secession and that country threatens Uganda's what that secession mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of of the people on that side seceding from yeah, the yeah. bigger ba Balkanazeso yeah, yeah. that Balkanazeso that he talked about and now we are here working on the roads mm. 
Because Do, does it? It's a question it, I wanted to ask. Yes, it where, may where be is, in some way. Really in some a, way, we are mm. trying to show. Look here, as the others took of managing you, for us we are more yes. ready mm. to take you on than the other ones who want to get you from the Balkan. And because of the threat, she can say this. Yes. So, she has concluded she can say this. So I can tell you. The teacher she is. <laughs> Put so, it in very simple no, terms. So I can tell you. I want to bring up and the issues of yeah. ADF. <laughs> on, the, on the issue, on the issue of, All right. <laughs> of we have two, two huge, really projects we are going to undertake as a country on a struggling economy. There are, but there, sustainable. There are others. Ideas. We are no, no, no. We are going to. By the way, you are thinking about the roads. We are going to export electricity there. Karuma Dam is coming on board. We are going to have an excess of 740 megawatts of electricity. We did not have the capacity to absorb it in Uganda. But so that is not making a war case. But, but you see, but you see it's no, not no, making no, an invasion case. We're really, so we're already spending. I think so right now we are right. pacifying. We are pacifying. So the word is pacifying the market. Very much. You know, now, he's used the... the for, for the first time, he's using the correct words in this discussion. I am disappointed. <laughs> pacification. <laughs> pacification. So we need to pacify our markets. We need to pacify Ed, our trading Edgar, partners. Edgar. Or else in the insecurity there will be exported to us. But you know, Edgar, you know Edgar, why Edgar, we Edgar, when, yes. when you tell the Ugandans I will that agree. The, the, the electricity we have, we can't consume it, when they have a lot of power cuts cut, and cut. power the other day I shortages. I could finish my weekly column in time. Yes. I, so they, they will tell you, but where is this excess power? When we don't have it, let us that's be, what you got. Let us be. And then we begin. We begin exporting which, which is by his people, DFID. Edgar Horrible. We let us be fair to to. to all, are we? He gave you your time. Yes. Part of his Thank time. Thank you. But I, I, I to, complained. His body language is ugly. Okay, I, I would want to invite you on this. Yes. <laughs> two projects on a struggling economy. Where are we? There are not two projects. There actually. He's talking about the third one. There's a third one of electricity also going there. We've forgotten the one of oil exploration. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you, the position <laughs> is, you're talking of projects. In this case, you mean the road, mm. <laughs> and you're talking of also the, the security aspect, yes. which is a war now, mm. and if you talk of electricity. But what I want to say is that at the moment, uh, we have our national plan, mm. at which the other time you mentioned. I would like to say that everything that is done now is very much incorporated. Mm -hmm. Even the manifesto of five years is well anchored on the, the plan. So uh, Uganda, first of all, security, we have in place because it can come as and when. Mm -hmm. So that one, we agreed that we must handle it. Mm -hmm. Now for our economic aspects, the five years that we are in, we have talked of the East African integration, the market. Mm -hmm. We have also talked of our friends like the Congo, who I think very soon will also join in the African uh, dimension. So they are any, joining the East African uh, Yes. So uh, anything, yeah, they want to. Out, anything, no, they are, they are. They are. They are anything yeah, within this that you are seeing uh, they, it, is on the, the National Development Plan. Mm. Chaired by Kadaga. It is on the national, Your friend. Let's, let's, let's have it. it is on the National <laughs> Development Plan. And we as a, a party movement try to operationalize it through the, the manifesto. Mode. Because if you look at <laughs> the, the manifesto, it is embedded <laughs> in there, what we do outside. So uh, the economic aspects is not coming right now from nowhere. Mm -hmm. So as you talk of the accountability, we believe it can be handled, or the security will be handled, otherwise we wouldn't have stepped there anyway. Mm -hmm. And the road has been there even before. So you shouldn't have this pessimistic feeling that is too much, and especially like the congressman is saying, how do you do this again with the, uh, the, the basic, roads in the basic you know. And all these are intricacies that are debated and looked at. And of course, uh, the other day on Saturday, I was in, a, I was in a Tororo, at the home of Tango Doe, at the function. I took it upon myself because I knew I would always meet Josephs for the inadequacies of the government. Instead of driving, <laughs> instead of driving straight to follow the traditional Iganga road, I drove to Busia and took the southern road. Joseph, there's a whole big of road from Busia coming down and you come out from Magamaga. Even much better than the traditional Iganga 
Okay, no, yeah. I know that is so no, now. No, that's that's absolutely nothing to do with that's that's you know, that road. Road. it. Was planned what what time ago you know, he, he, he knows that road. That's the one uh, no, Dr. Yeah, Bote and Dr. That's the one Dr. Dr. and Dr. Piote used to run yeah, into to, to exit from, <laughs> yeah. from terror. So what <laughs> was no, to run into exit. <laughs> exit from terror. They by your own commanders. They used that road. Yeah, that's the road they used. Now, what I'm saying is that they try to avoid the road. This dynamics, Joseph. I'm saying that the government thinks clearly well with the national development plan ex executed through a, a party manifesto such that when you see a road in Congo, please relax. Don't think that uh, the Tororo, the Nakapiripirit is forgotten. Everything is encompassed there. If you read it closely, you'll see it. So all these two is not in conflict with the other <laughs> aspects. It's not at all. By the it's way, harmonious. The, the Sam Odaka mm -hmm. national plan the These guys are just dusting 1970. it. 1970. Yeah. No, it was, it was. But you mm. see, the, his national plan, the road from Kavale, going to through my, my ancestral home, sort of where my Sorry. parents come from, mm. was supposed to terminate in Ruchuru, in the DRC. Mm -hmm. Yes, Edgar. I in the DRC. So, yeah. Yeah. so, so the, the, these things are, 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 are not, it's, it's not that they are developing in a vacuum or fall, falling from the sky. Mm. They, they have a basis on the grounding. Samo Daka. It At was the, absolutely nothing to do with the occupation. But carry Edgar, on. Edgar, 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 on, uh, on Edgar, yeah. I want to bring the mic to you officially. Um, and uh, because our time is fast spent, mm. we, uh, given that uh, we have other engagements to do uh, mm. individually, mm. I would want to talk about today's uh, Human Rights Day. And as we conclude, I would want to give a minute to each of you. Mm. A minute. Mm. Let's, let's respect time on this one. Mm. So that we, we score as a country how, how far have we gone mm. in protection and defense of the human rights. Mm, yeah. mm. And I'll surrender by minute to uh, Major Polowicz. Mm. He has been involved in these things at wider level. Mm. He was at the UN. He was at the UN, and his uh, his, uh, his 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 tour of duty there mm. was specifically on children, like his friend uh, Ambassador Laro Tunu. <laughs> but he's more vast in areas of, of human rights. You can talk about the sanction against uh, our, Major our, yes. uh, Major General Kandiho. Uh, first of all, I'm conflicted. I'm alive partly because of Major General Abel Kandiho. I won't go into details. And uh, I offer <coughs> my unreserved and conditional support for the little predicament he's going through. Mm. And I'm available for consultation for him. OK, interesting. Let's go to, to for free. Pro bono. <laughs> um, Joseph, yeah. Today, race day. No, today is December 10th, mm. uh, which is... Uh, the day we had elections uh, in the, the last time we had multi-party elections <laughs> in this country. <laughs> uh, uh, um, and in, in this <laughs> country, and um, UPC <laughs> won those elections. Had it only been the case that um, um, uh, people, certain people in Uganda did not opt for non-formal way, instead of taking the legal legal way, but they took the root of, of violence against our people. If uh, that had happened, maybe we'd be looking at things slightly different. So it's a very important historic day, uh, uh, December 10th. Uh, so from that point of view, it's completely consistent in my, in my view with uh, the question of human rights, something for which UPC is strongly committed to. We fought uh, as a government, we fought against the, the NRA guys who occupied Luero from uh, February 1981. <laughs> um, within the conventions of the UN and Geneva Conventions, uh, which is boss, um, I told the international media that uh, he had never heard about the Geneva Convention on war. So th th that is about today. But just to conclude very quickly in 30 seconds, uh, um, I know I happen to have had the privilege of meeting a Sadak president who, when the NRA invasion inv invaded Congo for the second time, um, was very furious. And this leader said that uh, Museven had told them a lie around the time of the invasion around Mobutu, and this time around they had another agenda with other nations, maybe including external forces. I really hope this time uh, uh, it's true within the broad nature of what's being said today uh, that uh, uh, the, the, the NRA is, is, is in Congo in order to not only protect our lives and property, but basically to do so in such a manner that uh, we do not come back with body bags unnecessarily uh, uh, in serving other interests beyond the boundaries of this country and if the interest of certain individuals in this country, it is dead in billions as we did, we did have last time. Mm. But going forward, this republic is possible. A future UPC government would, make, would ensure that whatever happens within this country is within the law. But most importantly, that whenever there is a UPC presence outside the boundaries of this country, it is a presence, military presence, as a last resort. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Honorable, uh, December 10th, Human Rights Day, what do you have to say? I, my heart goes out to all those who have either lost dear ones or have been tortured and their rights have been violated under any regime in this country and outside the borders of Uganda because violation of rights is not a personal thing. Mm. Rights are violated everywhere and therefore I call upon all those who violate human rights to reconsider their actions as we get to commemorate the International Human Rights Day. Mm. I know that there are so many of our officers who have violated people's rights. Our government has violated people's rights. Many, many of the Ugandans are having broken limbs, they are nursing wounds, they have been tortured, others are still in cells being tortured, we created torture chambers, and this is a, a violation of the fundamental human rights of Ugandans, and therefore I would say that as we commemorate the Human Rights Day, mm -hmm. Uganda as a country with its leadership needs to reconsider the way they are treating citizens, the rights to assemble, the rights to freedom of movement, right to freedom of speech, all these are rights that we have to consider and put on top of the agenda as we commemorate the Human Rights Day, mm -hmm. which is December 10th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just want to see a world where everybody is respected irrespective of who they are. Mm -hmm and that they are accorded the rights that they deserve, those that are inherent and those that are supposed to be given to them by law. Mm. And so all of us in the world, I wish you a happy Human Rights Day and call upon everybody to ensure that it becomes your duty to be fair, to be just. And this day finds us in the jungles of Congo fighting mm. Mm. I pray that our forces bear in mind that they are citizens in Congo who may not necessarily be the ADF that they are pursuing, and they have to respect their rights. Mm. They have to respect the rights of the citizens, the, the, the civilians. It's part of their responsibility internationally and also locally. Mm. We have a duty to protect the children. We have a duty to protect the, the women and those who are not in combat. And so they have to bear that in mind, that as they go for war, they have certain parameters they have to bear in mind. And so tomorrow is really a day that many people, would, some would want not to remember, some will want to celebrate it in happiness, because possibly in one way or the other, they have had their rights defended, but the protection and ensuring that rights are respected is a duty for all of us. Thank you very much, Honorable. And uh, finally, uh, oh, Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you, my land brother, at, uh, Baro, because he knows that we have gone a long way and he knows I've done so much in human rights. As he says, you know, the human rights system, the global human rights system is that it is coded. Uh, it is written down. And once it is written down, some of them are through uh, conventions where states ratify. And when states ratify, there is a provision that who is this person who is going to see that uh, uh, Malawi, Poland, or Russia is following. Otherwise, states would ratify and dump it there. So I'm just honored to say that uh, I have been a panel of the nine experts in the world to have been elected mm. from General Assembly in New York by 193 ambassadors to be that body that oversees particularly on the Convention of the, on the Rights of the Child which is the only universally ratified convention. Remember, states have power to ratify or not. Mm -hmm. But on the issues of children, uh, it is agreed worldwide that there's no politics. So it is the most it is the universal, it is the only universal ratified instrument. And of course, you will know that human rights are, are holistic and individual, indivisible. You're not going to talk of a right of a child when you exclude the mother. Or you're not going to child a, right, a girl child without the old woman. So all human rights are, are in the, one and individual. Mm -hmm. in the division, you can't divide it. <clears throat> so I have had that opportunity to have sat in Geneva for two Kisanja, because four years you go to New York for another election. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm glad that I did it and I didn't embarrass my country. Maybe for another talk, it is not easy Tabaro, to be outside there. Many people get dumped in the nearest plane back to Uganda. And there are so many presidents, <laughs> that that, true. including Somali, mm -hmm. recently. That, that is true. So yeah. it's, 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 it's not easy that yeah. a Ugandan goes to this high-level body and you serve for a term, mm. you go back to New York, you are re-elected, and you serve for eight years. So I did my best. Uh, now, uh, actually, I didn't know whether you were best in New York or Geneva. You were always on the plane. It's Geneva. <laughs> Election only takes place in New York mm. because it is the only center where mm. every state has a voting power. Voting power. Mm. But the headquarters of human rights is in Geneva. Mm. So I've done it now. For human rights, uh, therefore, we have done at that globe. But in Uganda particularly, I'm glad to say that uh, we have the constitution which provides for human rights. We also have other pieces of legislation. For example, uh, the Torture Act. Uh, Honorable Winnie will agree that the act provides that if you torture, you are no longer going to hide under Attorney General. That I, individual. Yes, that I'm a police officer. Seriously. I, I'm a police officer. I've, I've tortured, so ask Attorney General. No. This goes to, the, to show you the commitment government had to say no. We are, we, are, we are tired of telling you people don't torture in execution. If you torture, you are personally liable. So, but also to mention that we have a human rights commission provided for, which should ordinarily have the mandate to see that human rights in Uganda is guaranteed. And I have a several pieces of legislation. I'm aware of excesses uh, by mm. some state persons, but state that is what, not the state, state. Uh, state actors. Mm. And that is why the act it's provides the that should you be careless, do it, you are personally liable. Um, this um, is what the state is saying. Um, so, therefore, I, I encourage Ugandans to go ahead with the enjoyment of their rights. It is well... Uh, and, and, whether and, and report cases of torture. Whether written or not, it is provided for. Even when written under the Constitution and other subsidiary laws, go ahead and enjoy your rights. Government is committed to the enjoyment of rights. And any excesses can be dealt with. Uh, I, I therefore join my colleagues in the, the celebration of the International Human Rights Day. Actually, I should be in Geneva, but you know, these days there are many challenges because I am one of the, as I told you, nine members who served in that committee and left with honor. Uh, so I attach a lot of my interest in human rights, just like all of us. So the status quo as a country, as a government, is that we are provided all avenues for the enjoyment of rights. And please, fellow Ugandans and everybody and in our jurisdiction, go ahead and enjoy your rights as we celebrate tomorrow. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ndugu Apola. Thank you very much, Honorable Winnie. Thank you very much, uh, Joseph, and of course, uh, Edgar, for sparing your time to, to be part of this conversation and of course, informing our viewers out there who are really needed uh, this information yeah. to know why uh, uh, Uganda is in uh, 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 Congo and uh, all the activities that are happening there. But of course, Democratic Republic Congo. of Congo. When you Democratic say Congo, Republic Republic another of Congo. Congo. Another yes. Congo. You'll be referring to another country. Yeah, true. Thank Congo you very much for that. Delay. But also importantly, on the, in, uh, the Human Rights Day, of course, your, your message to, to the public is, uh, is being very uh, received and, of course, uh, clear. Uh, thank you very much to our viewers out there who are always part of this conversation every Friday on the chat show here. Thank you very much for following and please follow this conversation. It's on uh, YouTube, it's on all our social media pages, on our Twitter, chat show UG. Thank you very much for being ardent followers and uh, of course being uh, glued every time. Let's meet next week. Thank you and for good and my country.